The DreamQuest Pro N150 Mini PC shakes things up a bit in the crowded budget space with some features that are different from the norm. Do you like a lot of storage devices? Well, you'll like this one. Same as their previous Pro N100 Mini PC release, this one comes with a metal case midsection with a plastic top and bottom. That gives it a more solid and premium feel over the sea of plastic budget minis out there. So what's new this time? Well, inside is Intel's recently released N150 Refresh, a 4-core, four 4-thread four CPU with UHD graphics. Now that Intel has put up a page for it, we can check out the differences. The N150 has a 200MHz bump up on the max turbo frequency, which from extensive testing only seems to apply to single core. And the UHD graphics get a 250MHz increase that makes a substantial difference over the N100. DreamQuest's Pro N150 is available for $174 US dollars on the official website after the coupon they provided me, or you can find it on Amazon.com. That configuration comes with 16GB of DDR4-3200 and a 512GB SSD. That's the one we're looking at in this review. In the box you won't find much accessory wise, just a power supply and a HDMI cable. On the front of the Mini there's just a power button. Inside it is a budget Realtek 8821CE for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. The left side has four USB 3 5 gigabit ports along with a micro SD card reader. On the back is a 3.5mm audio jack and Type-C data only port. Yep, unfortunately it doesn't support USB-C PD. For display output, DisplayPort and dual HDMI is included. For wide networking, there's dual Realtek Gigabit LAN and finally the barrel jack for the power supply. You can run three displays at up to 4K 60Hz, although each added display uses up a slice of the iGPU. Unless it's basic desktop stuff, I'd stick to one display or use lower resolutions. Opening up the Mini is pretty easy, just four exposed screws to remove. Then pry open the lid and be careful of the SATA ribbon cable. Yep, this one supports a 2.5 inch SATA drive, very uncommon now. It also comes with dual M.2 slots. Pretty sure this is the first older Lake N Mini we've looked at with three storage options. Well, four if you count the micro SD card slot. Due to limited PCIe lanes with older Lake N, both M.2 slots max out at PCIe Gen 3 X1 when using an NVMe drive. That means maximum sequential read and write speeds of under 1GB per second. DreamQuest includes Windows 11 Pro with its mini PC. No malware was found bundled with the OS. Ubuntu was updated recently and now it works on an Intel N150 without any issues. Cool. Right, let's see how the DreamQuest Pro N150 holds up in the benchmarks. CPU performance isn't strong with this mini and it falls down the stack. Against the best N150 result, it's down 8% in single core. The multi-core, it's also one of the weaker results. Increasing the power limit in the BIOS didn't make a difference. This time the drop is a larger 20%. Geekbench single core confirms what we saw with Cinebench, it's on the lower side. No surprises with multi-core either. The other N150s are doing much better. In H.264 software video encoding which uses the CPU, you guessed it, it's one of the lower performers matching a few of the N100s. Moving on to integrated graphics. Intel's N150 is a nice jump over the N100s and this one performs as expected with DDR4-3200. While a mini with DDR5 has a boost of 9% in this benchmark. In TimeSpy, the DreamQuest again matches the other DDR4 N150 result and the DDR5 Mini is ahead by 7%. While on Steel Nomad Lite, the DDR5 lead shrinks to just 5%. So it's high single digit percentage gains with DDR5 on the graphics side, but DDR4 3200 is still okay, especially if it keeps the price down. I use the game Valorant to verify that Secure Boot is properly implemented on the Mini. I don't like to toot my own trumpet, but this has resulted in BIOS update fixes for a few mini PCs, including this one. So yeah, Secure Boot has been added and it works fine. Oh, and Valorant isn't a good experience with a lower performance CPU. You'll see plenty of stutters. Something like League of Legends does better, but still falls below 60 FPS when in battle. Even a game like Hades isn't hitting 60fps. 
So obviously, the N150 is not a CPU for gaming. Those wanting to use the Mini as an emulation box will max out at PS2, GameCube and Wii era games at 720p for the most part. DreamQuest Pro N150 passes the audio latency test with Cinebench running in the background. This typically indicates that there's no thermal throttling. I used to get asked about video editing on these budget mini PCs, so I've been testing them all and it's pretty impressive that the older Lake N series of processors can handle 1080p Adobe Premiere projects as well as they do. Even with a CPU constantly maxed out, it's pretty responsive and stutter free. And that's because Intel's hardware video decoder on chip is really impressive and allows playback of a lot of H.264 and AV1 videos at 4K60 without being a stutter fest. Now for the remaining tests. 3 Mark storage benchmark shows a decent SATA SSD is included. The Kingfast is no speed demon, but it does the job. It doesn't have a temperature sensor on it unfortunately, so I can't show you that data. What I can say from extensive experience is that M.2 SATA SSDs use little power and only get warm, so it won't be a problem with the included drive. Bluetooth range is decent, slightly better than the last DreamQuest Mini tested. Wireless range also passed the 12 meters or 39 feet from the router test using the 5G band. No network connection issues popped up in a full game of Valorant. There's nothing out of the ordinary with idle power draw. This one's around what the other mini PCs are doing. The maximum power draw recorded was higher than expected given the CPU performance on offer. When it comes to the max CPU temp, most of the budget minis run much cooler than the high end units, but this one peaked at 88C, which is above average. Fan noise is usually very low in the budget range. The DreamQuest Pro comes in at around average on this chart and much better than the previous N95 version. So, well done there. This is one of the bigger budget minis out there, taking up as much volume as some of the flagships we look at. Mashing the delete key on startup gets you into the BIOS. In advance, you can turn off the LED logo light if it annoys you. While on chipset, you'll find wake on LAN and auto power on options, and that's about it for the BIOS. Okay, we've looked at a lot of metrics, it's now time for the pros and cons. The DreamQuest Pro N150 comes with a metal case, which is rare in the budget space. It has three storage options, four if you count the microSD card slot, and this is its biggest draw card. Thankfully, it's easy to open. However, CPU performance is lacking. DDR4 is included rather than 5, so GPU performance takes a small hit but still quite a bit better than an N100. Unfortunately, the USB-C port is data only, no display or power delivery. And that's the DreamQuest N150. Those wanting a budget mini PC with lots of storage options can find it linked in the video description. Oh, and if you want some additional entertainment, why not check out my video comparing the world's cheapest versus most expensive mini PC with integrated graphics right here. Cheers.